Hi guys, my name is Arthur and today I would like to show you how you can deploy smart contract and then read or write information to that smart contract from React.js applications. Of course, I will use React.js just as an example. You can do that in any framework or library that you like. You can use jQuery, Vue.js, Angular or any others. The React.js part is actually super small in this application application. So first of all, we're going to deploy the smart contract. And for that, I will use uh, ERC 20, which is a standard of the smart contract that lets you build your own coin. So we will build a dev coin. Um, and then we're going to mint some um, supply of this coin at the beginning, uh, just to build some very simple application that we can use uh, from uh, our browser. So we can just type the contract address because obviously if we are creating our own token, we have to deploy our smart contract. We're going to use today a test network for that. So we will not need to spend any real ether or real cryptocurrency. So once we deploy the contract, then we have the contract address that we can use in our application. And we can, for instance, um, get some information about our coin, about our token. Um, then, of course, we can also fetch the balance um, of the currently uh, logged in user into the MetaMask. And then finally, uh, we can also try to send uh, some money to some other address. So first of all, I will deploy our smart contract, which is the DevCoin ERC20. And uh, if you are not familiar with how to deploy smart contracts or what the import does, what is uh, the constructor, how this uh, basic syntax of the Solidity works, I highly recommend you to check Solidity docs and go back to some of my previous videos that you can find on my uh, channel. So I think I can deploy the smart contract. So I'm using the injected web three um, environment, which is in my uh, situation, it's just an Rinkeby test network. So always be sure that uh, before you do any experiments, you are using actually the test network. So we have the Rinkeby test network. And right now, if I click deploy, um, it will ask me to pay some gas for the transaction. And of course, uh, I'm using here not real money, it's just a test network. So I'm using my test money to deploy the DevCoin smart contract because we need to have the smart contract address because we want to use that address inside the React.js application. So right now you can see uh, that here is our contract and it's actually deployed and we are able to copy um, the address of the smart contract, go to the etherscan, just paste here um, the address of our smart contract and you will see that it's just just uh, deployed. So this is our smart contract. And um, if we go here, we have uh, the orange uh, functions, which are write functions that whenever we want to call them, we have to spend some gas on the transaction. So for instance, if I want to transfer the money to somebody, I have to uh, use um, uh, my gas. However, if we have these uh, functions here, these uh, functions are free of charge, you don't have to spend any gas. So for instance, if I call uh, the name function, you see that we have the name of our coin, which is the dev coin. And here we have um, and here we have also the symbol and the total supply of uh, our cryptocurrency, because the total supply was actually um, used here uh, with the mint function. So uh, let's see um, what is the balance uh, of my account. So for instance, if I just paste here my account, um, then you can see that I have the total supply because I'm the person who deployed the smart contract. And now I think it would be interesting to actually move uh, this functionality that we have here in the Remix IDE to the React uh, JS application. So we can just use the smart contract, um, as you can see here uh, in the etherscan and just use that smart contract address and start calling functions because that's that's super useful because people are not building the smart contracts to use them out of the Remix IDE or 
or straight from the Ether scan, it's way more interesting to build your very own application. And here I will prepare for you sample application. You can find the code of this React.js application in the description to this video. And I will also um, put um, the small code snippet with this uh, code for um, the Remix IDE. So um, before we start to talking to the um, to the smart contract, we need to install uh, Ethers. Ethers is a special library that lets us communicate with the Ethereum blockchain. So we are able to issue transactions, we are able to create new wallets, we are able to use some smart contracts. However, before we can use the smart contract, because here I have just regular um, code of the react.js um, and here we have some input where we can type the contract address but if we when we click the get token info nothing happens because the handle submit uh, just do nothing um, but I will add the, um, the implementation right now. However, before I do it, I have to tell you uh, one thing that is necessary because before you can talk to the smart contract, you need to have two things. You have to have the contract address and then you need to have ABI code. And ABI code is basically some kind of the schema of the smart contract. So we need this code, which is a JSON. You will see in the minute. Um, I'm just clicking here, uh, copy, and you can do it once your um, smart contract is compiled. So if I copy the ABI code, now I will add it to my um, project. I will just create a new file. I will call it uh, ERC20 ABI. Um, and I will call it JSON and I will move it to the SRC um, folder. And actually, if I go to this um, file, you can see that we have the some kind of the schema of our smart contract. And this is super important because if we are starting to code in the JavaScript and interacting with the smart contract, our code need to know, okay, what kind of variables the smart contract offers, what kind of functions we can call. For instance, here we have the description of the event because every time you are issuing the transfer, the smart contract emits the event. And this ABI code represents presents all the events, all the functions, all the public variables that smart contract expose. And of course, if you have here um, the NFT smart contract, or you, you just write here some um, functions on your own, then the ABI code differs. So it's not like you, you are able to generate ABI code for any smart contract on the world, you rather have to compile the smart contract and then generate the ABI code and then include it to your project. So we have here ERC20 ABI JSON and now I think I'm ready to import uh, that file from, we'll just rename it. And now we can take care of handle submit function so we can actually try to interact with the smart contract. So let's see what we have here. So first of all, of course, we need to take the data from our form. So here we can type some address uh, and we need to um, take it. So we have the handle submit function that is called after clicking on this button. And here we have also uh, to get access to the provider. So um, the provider we can get out of the window.ethereum. So whenever somebody has the MetaMask installed, then we have this object here and we have to pass it to the new Ethers um, object. Um, but of course, the provider is not enough uh, because we also need to create a new instance of the smart contract using Ethers.js. And here we are passing three parameters. The first parameter is the address of the smart contract that we want to talk. The second parameter is the ERC20 ABI because we want to use the ABI of the ERC20 smart contract. Of course, if you have different smart contracts, contract, you have to generate the ABI um, code and uh, just paste it to your project. Sometimes people are hard coding this inside the, the same file, but I always prefer to just name the file 
with the smart contract that I'm using. So in this example, it's ERC20 and I'm just uh, saving it as a JSON. So we have, um, and then the last uh, variable that we have to pass to the contract um, function is the provider. And here is the important thing. We are taking the provider that is exposed from the window.ethereum. However, um, this is enough if you just want to read from the contract then you, you can just provide the provider and that's it however it's not enough if you want to send some transactions if you want to make a transfer the provider is not enough and i will show you in the minute how to interact with the contract also if you want to write uh, some uh, data but uh, then we can just call some functions so here for instance inside the remix ide you can see that we have these functions like name or symbol or total supply and if we um, create the new instance of the erc20 um, smart contract then you see that we can call the functions which is actually asynchronous functions that are returning the promise we are awaiting this promise and we are just assigning the token name the token symbol and the total supply so we have this and I will just um, store this information inside the regular uh, use state from the React.js. So we have some initial data like address, token name, symbol, but now we are just mutating the state with the things that we are just uh, fetched from the smart contract. So let's see uh, if it actually works because uh, I just deployed the smart contract on this address. And if we pass this address here and just um, use the get token info you can see that we have this information fetched from the blockchain so we are connected here with the metamask and metamask is exposing us uh, the provider that the eaters.js can use um, combined with the address and the erc20 of um, our smart contract so this is quite interesting but of course we need to do more so maybe uh, let's focus right now on the get my uh, balance um, function so so this function is uh, actually a bit more interesting because here uh, we want to also get the address of currently logged in user because this is quite um, common that if we want to get the balance of the user or we want to issue some transactions and we basically need to know who is using our application. So we not only take the provider like in the previous example, but we are also requesting access um, to the currently logged in user and we can use that um, we can call um, the on the provider the get signer function and this would be assigned to the signer uh, variable and then we can again call uh, the signer dot get address to get the signer address and then we are able to check what is the balance of the caller so um, in right now I'm using the same account so so it's pretty obvious um, however let's just store it uh, again inside our state inside our uh, local state of the react application and for instance if I will just refresh the application and just copy um, the address of the smart contract let's see how it works so this is the address here we have the information about the dev coin and then we can also get the balance of our account so you can see that we have the total supply assigned to this address however if i would change the address here so if i would go to this guy completely different um, address and if i would just get my balance right now you see that this guy doesn't have any balance right so so uh, the the owner of the contract has the total supply but other accounts if we choose them here uh, from uh, from the metamask they don't have the balance so right now i will show you how we can use our smart contract which represents the dev coin and how we can write information to the contract because as i said to you some uh, minutes ago uh, it's not uh, super useful just to read from the smart contract but it's super interesting how we can write to the contract and how we can interact with the contract so i will right now go back to my um, account that I'm the owner, right? So I'm getting my balance and you can see that I'm the owner. And now let's implement uh, the um, transfer. So 
transfer functions is super easy so it just takes the recipient address and the amount so we can specify where we want to transfer the money and how much we want to transfer so um, here you can see that I already prepared the form because I don't want to use your val valuable time so we will again focus on the handle transfer function and you can just get back to this example because you have the link to it in the description and if you have some questions you can always ping me on my discord channel that you can also find the link in the description or you can just ask in the comment section down uh, below so let's see the handle transfer function so first of all we are just preventing the default um, thing because we are submitting the form and then we are just want to uh, take the form data so this is the form that contains the recipient address the amount I'm not doing the error catching this is a homework for you that you can extend this code and add some some error catching because I just don't want to waste too much time of it. So we have the provider. Again, we are taking the provider from the window.ethereum. Uh, then we are sending some requests that is requesting access um, to, to the currently locked in um, user to currently locked in account. Of course, this is in the secure way. So our application is not getting whole access to all funds or we are not able to, uh, I don't know, sign some transactions without user agreement. It's just fetching information about currently uh, used account. Then we are getting the signer because this time, obviously, we want to sign the transaction. We are not fetching just information from the smart contract we want to issue the transaction so um, this part is same however this time we are taking uh, the address of the smart contract from our state um, and then we want to just uh, issue the transfer so we are fetching the recipient and we are uh, submitting their uh, information about the amount so let's um, save it um, let's let's uh, get back to our application and let's try to move some money to this guy this poor guy that just had the zero so um, so I will maybe just copy it I will refresh the application and let's start um, again so we have the um, token info we have the information about the balance and here i want to um just transfer some money uh, i will paste here the balance maybe i will take two zeros i will put here three and then i will hit the transfer and you can see that metamask actually detected that we are using the erc20 smart contract because that's super great that if you are using the abi of the regular erc20 this means that you are not only um, possible to manage the dev coin with our application but we are also able to use any other coins that are on the blockchain and that are using ERC20. So this code can work for DAI, this code can work for some stable coins that are using ERC20 and that's super, super uh, beautiful. So uh, let's see what MetaMask asked us here. They, they detected that we want to send 30 uh, dev because that's how the formatting works this is in way um, this is um, th this is our some some decimals of this amount uh, so it's in reality it's 30 dev because the dev is the symbol of the dev coin uh, and of course we need to cover our transaction here and uh, let's 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 confirm it let's let's hit it um, and here we have the pending transaction that actually we can see here on the contract address so so here you can see that we have the transfer function that was issued from our react.js uh, application and of course it affects our current balance so if i would click here get my balance you can see that i no longer have the total supply and of course if i would change my account to the guy that just received that money which is um, this guy um, then we can basically uh, hit get my balance and you can see that this guy has some money so no longer zero so our right work uh, because we can see it on the ether scan and also our application uh, reacts um, to this 
uh, to this particular uh, thing. So so that's that's super useful. However, the last thing that I want to show you uh, in this application is that we are able not only reading from smart contract, not only writing to smart contract, but we are also able to listen to the events that are happening on the blockchain. And this is also super helpful because sometimes we want to show something inside our application. We want to react to some certain event that is emitted from the blockchain. And here, if we check the transfer, the transfer function, uh, the transfer function, you see uh, that we have the emitting of, of, of the specific um, transfer event. So if we are transferring the money, then we have access to some information inside the event. So let's try to do it. And I will show you uh, in the other function. So here, for instance, uh, if we have um, our code, I will just prepare the use effect that would be uh, executed every time we are changing the address of the smart contract. And for instance, um, if the smart contract address, it's not the default value, we just want to run this effect, uh, then we will get access to the ERC20 using the same method that before that we have the window.ethereum provider, and we have the address, we have the ABI and the provider. And then we can also write ERC20 on transfer. So whenever the transfer happens, we can console log that, but not also console log and I will just move the information about the transactions to some uh, state. So I have here the really simple uh, state, um, which is array. And every time some event is emitted or detected by our application, we can push the transaction information that is catched here um, to our array. So of course, you are able to listen to more than one uh, event, you can also specify here some filters that you want to listen just just to the events that are emitted by you or sent to you, you can all customize that. Uh, however, I will not cover that in this video. If you have some questions about events, just let me know in the comment section down below and I will shoot another video for you where I will tell you more about the events out and how you can use them uh, in your application. So um, let's save and let's see how our application works right now. So um, of course, I need to to copy the address of that smart contract. And let's refresh the our testing application. And here I will submit um, um, the, the address, then I will fetch um, the balance, um, I will change maybe uh, the account to the previous one. Uh, so I'm the owner of the of the um, smart contract. And here I will uh, send some another money. So it would be maybe the different amount. And if I submit here the transfer, uh, you would see that I'm again asked about passing some uh, zero zero uh, something uh, 14 dev plus, of course, uh, the transaction fee. And if I click here, um, then we have transaction in the back, of course, we can add here some spinner, um, because you know, issuing uh, transactions, sending them to the blockchain always takes time, it depends how much we wish to pay for the gas transaction. It also depends on how the um, network is uh, loaded at the moment. So so of course, it it, it, it may have uh, some, it can take um, some uh, minutes uh, for our transaction to be actually um, mined. But here you can see that we have the recent transaction here. So we have the amount, we have the from, and we have to, and we have also link to the block explorer. So the block explorer represents that somebody transferred um, the amount of the dev coin, right? So how cool is that you can see that we have the transfers of uh, our cryptocurrency, and we are able to detect this information inside um, our app. And of course, um, this is super great that of course, if we issued the transaction, 
uh, from completely different source. So let's go here and maybe uh, let's uh, let's just copy some another uh, address here. Um, so I will just uh, send money to some other guy, maybe this person, uh, I will move to the owner of this smart contract. And here, uh, if we um, just submit the information, and we will um, maybe send a different amount, then we can pass it here, uh, submit maybe uh, seven, and then we can send the transaction from different source. So right now I'm um, issuing the transaction, uh, not from uh, the react application, but maybe some other application that talks to the blockchain, right? So we have uh, this uh, transaction pending. Uh, here, uh, we still can see it um, pending um, here right now it's mined. And let's go to our react application and bam, you can see that our application detected this event, even if it was detected from completely different salts. And what is funny, uh, here we also have this listener because uh, this uh, code sandbox instance also contains the event listener here. Um, and then uh, it, it, it just uh, works. So, so it's pretty, pretty uh, nice. Um, of course, uh, there is one thing that we still have to um, fix with this um, use effect because we are not doing here any cleanup. Um, so I will just create some instance um, of this uh, ERC20. I will keep it in the state of the application. And whenever we are closing the application or unmounting this component, we want to remove all listeners because we want to avoid situation that somebody uh, changes the smart contract address and we still have some old listeners. And the last thing that I would like to show you is that you can use that code for any other ERC20 smart contracts. And that's the beauty of the decentralized web tree blockchain and so on that if we are supporting our smart contract nothing stops us from actually using any other smart contracts so let's go to the etherscan io and here i can just uh, specify die and we can go to the die stablecoin which is also erc20 and we can just copy uh, the address of this smart contract. Here I will just make sure that I'm on the Ethereum mainnet. So I'm on the Ethereum mainnet and uh, on my uh, address. And here I can specify the address of the DAI. And if I would here, uh, click here, get token info, you can see that our React.js application works. We have the name of the DAI, we have the symbol, we have the total supply, and we have all the recent transactions. So we have the listeners that listens to all transactions that are emitted on the blockchain on the DAI stablecoin. We don't have to sign any papers. We don't have to ask anybody for permission. Just imagine if your regular currency could work that way. And of course, last thing, uh, I would like to invite you to my email course. You can just leave your email and you will get from me some curated materials about Web3 smart contracts, solidity and more. Besides that, you will also get access to my Discord channel on which you can ask um, questions or just uh, say hi to other developers or share your project. That's all I have for you for today. So you learned how you can read from the smart contract. So you can call uh, any any function you want. And then you can also write to the contract and then listen to all the events and present them in the app. All the code is the, in the text uh, in the description. If you have some questions, feel free to ask them uh, down below. And that's it. Thank you for your attention and see you on this channel.